This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. 18 races to bring you, including Florida Sunshine Millions Day. Unfortunately, a sloppy sealed racetrack and a yielding turf course. Up first, Philly Ramirez in the sprint. Our holiday mood off the St. Patrick's Day layoff, the 6-5 to five favorite. They're off. Our holiday mood, golden mystery. These two out for the lead. Isn't she grand? Sent for speed because I'm worth it is outside of them, and four of them battle it out early on. They've got a four-length lead on the other two, Wild Mount Tiffany and Emma's Encore, who's now eight lengths behind. The pace appears to be fast, and because I'm worth it on the outside has gone up to stick a neck in front. Our holiday mood is right there running in second, and then it's Golden Mystery. Isn't she grand? Checked sharply as they moved into the turn, and is now losing ground to Wild Mount Tiffany and Emma's Encore, 21-4 and four for the quarter. Around the turn, our holiday mood draws up next to Because I'm Worth It, and the rails open for Golden Mystery, and these three come to the top of the stretch, and now it's a two-and-a-half length gap to Emma's Encore, who's put to the whip in fourth, but is gaining ground, they're into the stretch, Golden Mystery on the rail is the one to beat here, she's pulled away from our holiday mood, Emma's Encore is next, and then comes Wild Mount Tiffany, but it's Golden Mystery, and Luis Saez, and they're pulling away. Golden Mystery has dominated her competition with a five-link win. Then it's Emma's Encore, our holiday mood, and Wild Mount Tiffany. Golden Mystery wins by a handful under Luis Saez, making a very, very powerful move on the turn, on the inside. 37th career stakes, second stakes win for Marty Wolfson's Golden Mystery, who was second choice in the wagering Returned six dollars over the sloppy racetrack at Gulfstream Park on Saturday afternoon. Emma's encore from well back in the pack finishes third in our holiday mood. The six to five favorite off the March 17th layoff finishes third in the Fillier Mare Sprint. Up next, we go on to the turf course for the Phillies and Mare Turf on the yielding turf course. Romacaca, odds on. They're racing in the Philly and Mare turf. And it's Romacaca out for the lead. Who wide to the inside away well. Refining came out running in third. And Regalo Mia is right behind them. Fourth early. Then Millennia and Call Me the Squeeze at the back. As Romacaca is the early leader. Francisco Torres has Romacaca out there by a length and a half over Refining. And Who Wai in the race to the first turn. And they're clear of their competition. And then Millennia. And followed now by Regalo Mia, who moves up a spot into fourth on the turn. Millennia's been shuffled back a bit just inside of Call Me the Squeeze. The opening quarter mile in 25 and 3 fifth seconds. They go to the back stretch where Ro Makaka is the leader. Hu Wai kept close in second. She's a length behind. Then refining in third. Regalo Mia, Millennia to the inside. And Call Me the Squeeze and five lengths separates the field as they continue their run through a half mile in 51 seconds flat. Ro Makaka. Who, why? Three quarters of a length behind. And right behind them is Refining. Millennia slipping through at the fence. Call me the squeeze outside of them, and Regalo Mia is now the trailer. Roma Kaka carries her speed into the far turn. Who wise a little bit closer now? Call me the squeeze is ridden along outside of them. They went three quarters in one fifteen and one. Regalo Mia has moved back up into fourth and is going four wide. And then it's Millennia waiting in fifth behind them. And now the trailer is refining. Coming to the top of the stretch. Roma Kaka. Who wide to the outside. Regalo Mia coming to take them on in the center of the course. Millennia right behind them in fourth. Roma Kaka digs in. Who wide to the outside? Regalo Mia on the far outside. Now it's down to Regalo Mia and Who Wai and Regalo Mia takes the lead. Regalo Mia has won the Philly and Mare turf over Who Wai, then Roma Kaka and Millennia. Regalo Mia making the first start since running well up the track in the Mrs. Revere. 
takes to the yielding turf course off an 8 to 1 morning line. Goes off at 5 to 2, returns $7.20 for Michelle Nehai. Huai finishes second, and Romakaka finishes third as the odds on 4 to 5 favorite. Back to the sloppy dirt course for the Philly and Mare Distaff. Successful song, 6 to 5. They're racing in the Sunshine Millions Distaff. And it's Delray Lady who sent hard to take the lead. Speak Easy Gal goes with her and Mud Honey on the outside is away in third and a bit wide going into the turn. Successful Song is just in behind the leaders. And tucking in right behind her is My Pal Chrissy on the far outside Tale of Peace and Score Boyera is the trailer. It's Delray Lady on top in the run to the back stretch. Clear a length and a half from Speak Easy Gal. Successful Song has taken a cozy spot. She's third on the rail, two lengths off the lead after a quarter and 23 and three-fifths seconds. Then it's Mud Honey, Tale of Peace on the far outside. Score Boyera is only three lengths off the lead, and right behind her is my pal Chrissy at the back. They continue the run up the back stretch, where Del Rey Lady and Joe Bravo make the pace. And they're on top by a length over successful song, and speakeasy gal to the outside, past a 48 flat half mile. These three are well bunched as they move for the turn. Then it's Mud Honey, My Pal Chrissy to the inside, followed by Score Boyera, and Tale of Peace is the trailer around the far turn. Del Rey Lady taken on by the favorite successful song. And with three furlongs to run, successful song has taken the lead. And she's moving away from Del Rey Lady now. And then it's Speakeasy Gal who's under a drive. My Pal Chrissy is gaining some ground from fourth, but successful songs looking good as they come to the top of the stretch. Three quarters in one, 12 and two. They're into the stretch in Joel Rosario and successful song set sail for home. And they've got the lead to themselves. Speakeasy Gal is second, trying to close the gap now. Successful song right against the rail. Speakeasy Gal drifting out and second best to successful song in the distaff. My pal Chrissy was third and then came Delray Lady. And successful song going out for Eddie Plisa Jr., Live Oak Plantation, and Joel Rosario. They make easy going of the distaff. They return $4.40 for the win. And you read the chart for a successful song along the rail in the opening stages. Urged to pick up the pace along the rail and comes home three-plus lengths to the good. Up next, the Florida Sunshine Million Sprint, Star Harbor, Five to two. They're racing in the Sunshine Million Sprint. Bit of an awkward start there for Star Harbor. It is County Gun who goes out to take the lead. Star Harbor, who did not have a good start, is going to rush up and take command early now. And then it's Shockham again, away third to their outside. Off the jack is away, running in fourth position. Black Diamond Cat, Little Drama next along the rail, and then comes Bahamian Squall. Bernie the Maestro on the far outside, and Cajun Breeze. Hello Prince and close it out, trail the field as Star Harbor reaches the front through a 22 flat opening quarter mile. He's on top a half a length over Shockham again in second. Off the jack moves up on the outside of them in third. Then County Gun, Little Drama, Black Diamond Cat, three wide. Two and a half lengths more to Bahamian Squall who gets going with five Five lengths to make up and then Cajun Breeze and close it out. A 45 and one half mile. They're into the stretch and off the jack has taken the lead. Off the jack in front. Star Harbor drops back. Little Drama gains ground. Bahamian Squall to the outside and close it out. trying to come on too. It's off the jack in front. Close it out. Little Drama. Bahamian Squall off the jack one it. Then Bahamian Squall. Little Drama and close it out. But it is off the jack, ladies and gentlemen, at, at 13 to 1. And just want to give you a little insight to the odds board in the 11-horse field in the sprint. You had five runners between 5 to 2 and 5 to 1. You had five runners from 36 to 1 and up. The only middle-type price was off the jack at 13 to 1. He returns $28.20. Bohemian Squall finishes second as one of the well-bet horses, and Little Drama finishes third. And Star Harbor, off of two big allowance wins up in New York, finishes fifth as the 5-2 to two favorite. 
We're going to a quick break. When we come back, more action from Gulfstream Park and the fairgrounds. Here in upstate New York, no one provides bettors with more wagering options than Capital OTB. Our network of branch and easy bet locations stretches from the mid-Hudson Valley all the way to the Canadian border and west to central New York. So whether you need to place a bet, fund your Capital Bets account, or watch the next big race, all the action is just around the corner. A full list of our branch and easy bet locations can be found online at CapitalOTB.com. Capital OTB, the better and most convenient choice for wagering in upstate New York. Listen to what people are saying about the Clubhouse race book. It's really nice. It's really modern, open, bright, and there's definitely a lot more machines where you can make your wagers. And I like the fact that it's open anywhere I look. I can see uh, football if I want to, or any of the tracks. And I can also see the people that I've seen for many years. You feel comfortable. The staff is great. It makes you feel comfortable. It's a nice place to spend an afternoon on the weekend. And continuing on with the Florida Sunshine Millions, the mile and an eighth turf with doubles partner, one to two. They're all in line. They're racing in the Sunshine Millions turf. And it's Teeks North out fast for the front. Roman Tiger on the outside broke well and is out running in second position. And right behind them is Slew's answer along the rail. Then it's Bad Dead in between horses. Duke of Mischief on the outside. Shakespeare Shalaya. Doubles partner is second last early. The trailer is Piku. And Teeks North makes the pace into the first turn. Teeks North out there a length and a half. On the outside is Roman Tiger running in second. Down at the rail, Slew's answer is in third. Bad Dead is fourth. Opening quarter mile in 25 and 3 fifth seconds. Then it's Duke of Mischief, fifth on the outside. Doubles partners alongside of Shakespeare Shalaya. And Piku is last and only five and a half lengths off the lead as Teeks North and John Velasquez go on to the back stretch in front. Teeks North by a length and a half. Roman Tiger continues to run in second. Bad Dead is third through a 52 half mile. There's just no pace on at all here. Slew's answer and Duke of Mischief are together. Doubles partner not getting much pace in front of him is now back there in sixth and racing four and a half lengths off the lead. Then Piku and Shakespeare Shalaya around the far turn. Teeks North a half length in front. Roman Tiger and on the outside, Bad Debt. Slew's answer in behind them. Doubles partner. Then comes Duke of Mischief on the outside. Three quarters, one sixteen and three. They're into the stretch. And Teeks North set sail for home. Doubles partner on the outside tries to kick it in. Then Slew's answer followed by Roman Tiger and Bad Debt. It is Teeks North with a three length lead on Doubles partner. And Teeks North has won the Sunshine Millions Turf. And then it was doubles partner second, Shakespeare Shalaya and Bad Debt. Teeks North, though, ladies and gentlemen, goes right to the front. Never done it before under John Velasquez. Makes every poll a winning one for new trainer Michelle Nevin, who takes over for the Richard Dutro trainee. Returns $19.80. Last stakes win, the UN Handicap, a grade one in the summer of 2011, was 0 for 5 after that until Saturday afternoon, adding the Sunshine Millions turf. Doubles partner, the 1 to 2 favorite, finishes second, and Shakespeare Shalali, third. Final race on the Sunshine Millions card, the classic. At 2 to 5, Mucho Macho Man, adding blinkers. They're off in the Sunshine Millions Classic. And Mucho Macho Man broke the best. I'm stepping it up is sent through on the inside of him. And Fort Loudon goes up alongside of those two. And the three of them go wide. I'm stepping it up really floated those two out going into that turn. And now Mucho Macho Man is shuffled back into third position early. Cash rules his fourth on the outside. Ron the Greek's not too far behind. He's only five and a half lengths off the lead. Atoned is after that. And Longshot Decaf again is far behind. 
23 flat, a snappy opening quarter mile. Onto the back stretch they go. And it's I'm stepping it up. Fort Loudon. Mucho Macho Man is kept outside of those two by Mike Smith. He's to the outside of the leaders. And now three of them are closely packed on the back stretch. Cash rules is two and a half behind them. Ron the Greek closer today. Down on the inside with four lengths to make up. And the trailer is atoned and decaf again. Continues to be far behind after a 46 and two half mile. There's a half mile to go. I'm stepping it up. Fort Loudon. Mucho Macho Man just to the outside of them. And now he's edging up and he's making his move for the lead on the far turn. And Ron the Greek is right behind him. Ron the Greek's only a length and a half off the lead. And Cash Rules is going up on the outside. And the two of them just went by Mucho Macho Man. It is Ron the Greek who's taking the lead. Mucho Macho Man is not firing today. He's dropping back through the field. Ron the Greek turns for home with a four-length lead. On the outside, Cash Rules is second, and then it's Fort Loudon. And Mucho Macho Man didn't run his race today, but Ron the Greek did, and he will trounce his competition. Ron the Greek, a dominant performance in the Sunshine Millions Classic. And then it was Cash Rules, followed by Fort Loudon and Atoned. And on the sloppy sealed racetrack, Mucho Macho Man only wanted to go uh, about three quarters of the distance, ladies and gentlemen. Pulled up in this stretch, doesn't even finish as the two to five favorite. But Ron the Greek finishes, ladies and gentlemen, and finishes extraordinarily powerful, winning off by nearly a dozen, returning $8.40 for Bill Mott under Jose Lascano. Cash Rules finishes second, Fort Loudon third in the Florida Sunshine Millions Classic. On Sunday afternoon at Gulfstream Park, time to go to the turf. They went from yielding to firm in one day for the Kitten's Joy. Charming Kitten, three to five. They're racing in the Kitten's Joy. Good start for Charming Kitten. On the outside is Prado Cat and Dawn on the inside, Redwood Kitten now comes on through. Redwood Kitten and Prado Cat to set the pace and Charming Kitten sitting right behind them. Bambazonki is in fourth. Then comes Fire Guard on the inside Saturday Special and a four-length gap back to Summit County who's right up alongside a flying bird at the back of the field as they race for the turn. Redwood Kitten on top. Pressed along by Prado Cat through a 24 flat quarter. These two a neck apart onto the back stretch, and Charming Kitten is allowed to settle behind them in third. Another two and a half to Bambazonki. They're followed by Fire Guard. After that comes Saturday Special. Summit County to the outside is seven lengths off the lead, and trailing the field is Flying Bird. A 48 flat half mile. They continue up the back stretch. Redwood Kitten leads the way by a neck. Prado Cat on the outside, second. Charming Kitten continues to sit in third. Bambazonki is fourth, with four lengths to make up as they race into the turn. And Fire Guard is going well enough, starting to pick it up now. Then comes Summit County outside of Saturday Special at the rail. And last of all is Flying Bird, three quarters, one, twelve, and three. They're coming toward the top of the stretch. Charming Kitten is taking the lead. Bamba Zonkies right alongside in second. They've left Redwood Kitten behind. Fire Guards on the far outside. Final furlong. Charming Kitten and Bamba Zonky. These two will decide it. Charming Kitten's got the lead. Bamba Zonky on the outside. Charming Kitten wins the Kitten's Joy. Then Bamba Zonky, Redwood Kitten, and Saturday Special. John Velasquez gets another W, this time for Todd Pletcher and the Ramsey's Charming Kitten. Scores the victory, returning $3.40. Charming Kitten had been 0 for 3 in stakes since scoring in the career debut. Uh, one thing I thought about John Velasquez, he was working very hard on Charming Kitten the last two furlongs, but ch grinds out the one-length vit victory over Bombazanki with Redwood Kitten finishing third at 42-1. to one. Time to go down New Orleans way for a couple of stakes races. Up first to the Louisiana Handicap, Mark Velasquez, 4-5. And they're off. Here's Brethren and Fertini toward the inside. Hurricane Ike also broke sharply for James Graham. 
So it's Hurricane Ike to lead them to the first turn from Infartini. And Mark Valeski is right at Hurricane Ike's heels at the turn. Brethren is running in the three path. Then Wash Park and farther out is Self Control. Running in the four to five path. We come back to Macho Bull. And Raison d'Etat has dropped back to last. Hurricane Ike out in front. And James Graham takes Hurricane Ike in hand to lead Mark Valeski, who's tracking well. Infertini is third, Brethren next in fourth, followed by Wash Park Self-Control Macho Bull and Raison d'Etat. The opening quarter for Hurricane Ike, 24 and 4 fifths seconds, five furlongs to go. Hurricane Ike dictates his own terms to Mark Valesi, who's close up there for Rosie Napravnik. With Infertini running in third and Brethren fourth with the rail. Self-Control Wash Park is seven from the front and Hurricane Ike still doing the bulk of the work with four furlongs to go. Macho Bull second to last and Raison d'Etat trails. Half mile for Hurricane Ike. 49 seconds flat. Three furlongs from home. Hurricane Ike. Mark Valeski right there poised to strike. Hurricane Ike. Mark Valeski. In front, still a close third. Self control in the black cap. Brethren will straighten away in fifth from Wash Park sixth. Raison d'Etat being ridden with whip. Then Macho Bull. They're at the top of the stretch. Mark Valeski charging, slightly drifting. Mark Valeski on the outside, Infratini getting those left-handers. Hurricane Ike toward the rail, final furlong, then Brethren and self-control. Mark Valeski, Mark Valeski and Infratini, they come together for the final 16th. Infratini, Mark Valeski, Infratini's got Mark Valeski. Infratini and Miguel Mena. Mark Valeski was second, then Hurricane Ike and self-control close. It was Infratini over Mark Valeski in the final strides. But it is Infratini. Under Miguel Mina for Paul McGee, scoring the victory as the second choice in the wagering, turning $7.80. Very nice score in here. But Mark Velosky, I thought, ran a tremendous race off the long layoff. Last start for Mark Velosky was victory in the Peter Pan Stakes back in the middle of May. If you saw this race live, you saw how restless Mark Velosky was in the, in the gate just wasn't getting along very well, and I thought put in a supreme, supreme effort under Rosie and the Pravnik. Last year was runner-up in the Risen Star in Louisiana Derby. Hurricane Ike finishes third in this year's Louisiana Handicap. Up next, they changed the names of the three-year-old Philly stakes races down at uh, the fairgrounds, the Silver Bullet Day. The old one is now the Rachel Alexandra. The new Silver Bullet Day is the old Tiffany Lass. Gal about town, 9 to 5. And they're off in the Silver Bullet Day stakes. And Irish loot bobbled at the start. There's Aphrodite going out toward the front with finding more. Gal about town comes up on the outside with the white cap to vie for it too as they turn. It's Aphrodite. So Aphrodite to be a long odds leader in front of finding more as they go to the back of the track. Galabout Town and toward the inside, Touch Magic is fourth and bit ranked there under James Graham. Touch Magic is fourth as they race on to the backstretch now. Then Brotherhood Singer, Chow Bella Luna is settled in front of Flashy Campaign. Then Irish Loot out wide on the track, Estonia and Smitten Trails. The first quarter, 24 seconds flat. Aphrodite with five furlongs to go. Aphrodite leads by two, tracked by Finding More. And Galabout Town is right there closing third and not too far off the pace. Touch Magic. Is settled at the inside now and is making headway with four furlongs to go. Touch Magic Brotherhood singer Chow Bella Luna is six from the leader. We come back then to Flashy Campaign, a half mile in 48 seconds flat. Aphrodite, three furlongs from home. Finding more, challenging now. Gallabout Town is a close third. Touch Magic, fourth. Brotherhood singer being driven in fifth. Chow Bella Luna, sixth and under a ride. Then comes Irish Loot, Flashy Campaign, Smitten, Estonia toward the inside last as they come toward the top of the stretch. Past the quarter pole. Three quarters, one thirteen and two. Gal about town has charged up to the front from Finding More. Toward the inside, Touch Magic is staying on. Aphrodite gives way. Irish Loot, Smitten on the foot outside. They're deep in the final furlong. Gal about town, Touch Magic with that resolute run. Gallabout Town, Touch Magic is getting up. Touch Magic. Touch Magic to win the Silver Bullet Day Stakes from Gallabout Town. Spit in third, Irish Loot fourth, and finding more was fifth. Touch Magic coming off a runner up finish in the Delta Princess and James Grant and Patrick Devereaux. They score the three quarter length victory, returning $9 even. Gallabout Town, 
off back-to-back runner-ups in the Golden Rod and the Pocahontas at Churchill Downs, finishes second, smitten third in the Silver Bullet Day Stakes. Three-year-olds get underway in the trek to the Louisiana Derby. Up first, the LeCompte at a mile 70 yards. Eight to five, Avies quality. They're off in the LeCompte Stakes. High tie, oxbow between horses. Hawakam and the Royal Blue and White Depolets rank early on. On the outside, circle unbroken. Malibu High from the rail. As they turn, it's Oxbow and High Tide toward the inside buying for it from Malibu High. Hawakam next in fourth. The Canadian Stakes winner, Avis Quality, runs in the three to four path there for Rosie Novrovnik and farther out still, circle unbroken. We come back then to Fear the Kitten. In between horses, I've struck a nerve with Golden Soul racing up the back stretch. The first quarter, 24 and two fifths seconds. Oxbow leads at the five and one half. Oxbow, two lengths in front of High Tide. At same margin to Malibu High, settled along in third by two. I've struck a nerve. Now gains ground while deep on the track into fourth. The inside is Fear the Kitten. Hawakim is just off the rail. Then Golden Soul, Circle Unbroken, and Avis Quality in it amongst those back markers past the half mile. Four furlongs for Oxbow. 48 and two fifths seconds as they turn again. Oxbow and High Tide, the two out in front. Malibu High at the inside, saving ground. High Struck and Nerve is fourth, under three furlongs to go. Still a three length break to Golden Soul. Fear the Kitten. Circle Unbroken in an all out drive. Avis Quality together with Hawakam. Those two a joint last, and it's Oxbow who turns them in in the LeCompte. Three quarters, 113 and one. Under a quarter to go. Oxbow just maybe headed by High Tide, but Oxbow is digging his heels in. Oxbow in front, final fairgrounds furlong, and Oxbow is slipping away. High tie weaving about. Toward the inside, eyes struck a nerve. Down toward the wire, it's Oxbow and John Court. Oxbow runs out impressively, one by 10. Golden Soul second, Fear the Kitten third, eyes struck a nerve fourth, then Malibu high. Oxbow are going away, decisive winner. But Oxbow for Wayne Lucas and Bluegrass Hall, they go right to the front under John Court, and they score the victory as third choice in the wagering. Returns $11.20. Golden Soul finishes second and Fear the Kitten third. Avis Quality, the 8-5 to five favorite, first-time dirt, beats one horse in Saturday's Le Comte. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have action from Oaklawn Park and Santa Anita. Hi, race fans. I'm Seth Miro with some great news. Now you can get live streaming of all our tracks. Just log on to CapitalOTV.com, click on the live streaming link, and choose from more than 35 tracks from around the world. Plus, you can now get race replays. Any day, any track. And don't forget to check out our new virtual tow board. In horse racing, information is key, and no one brings you the crucial information you need, like CapitalOTV.com. Live streaming, race replays, and our new virtual tow board. CapitalOTV.com. Check it out now. Listen to what people are saying about the Clubhouse Racebook. I've been coming here for um, well over 30 years to the OTB, and uh, I think this is an outstanding facility. Probably uh, comparable to something you'd see in Vegas. They have the big screens there, and then they have uh, the auxiliary screens for, you know, watching all the tracks. And the primary tracks of the day, they'll switch to the big screens, which is ideal for most of us race guys. We like to see the big races on the big screen. Well done. We turn our attention to Oak Lawn Park. Up first, the Pippin Stakes, the entry of Witan and Jemima's Pearl, who I think was the stronger half of the entry, 6-5. to five. And they're off. Clean beginning. Vuitton breaks out very smoothly, as does Lady Candidate. Those two stride for stride as they head into the first turn. Jemima's Pearl comes out running in third. Juliet Deer fourth. Mind save along the inside. Don't tell Sophia four wide into the turn, but only four lengths off the speed. Then it's Bahama bound. It's a beautiful thing. And Miss Hockaday is between those two with six furlongs to run. It's a moderate tempo, and Lady Candidate sets it. Leads by a half length. Vuitton racing in second. They're followed by Jemima's Pearl, White Blinkers third. Juliet Deer hugs the rail in fourth. Don't tell Sophia fifth, four lengths off the lead. Then it's Mind Save on the inside of Bahama Bound, who's headstrong, too clear of Miss Hockaday, and it's a beautiful thing at the back. 
They're heading to the half mile pole in the Pippin, chasing Lady Candidate, who's been there every step of the way. Vuitton, a half length back, second, perfect trip for Jemima's Pearl, third. On the inside, Juliet Deer is racing in fourth, two lengths off the lead. Don't tell Sophia is just outside of her. Bahama Bound still on hold with five to make up. Followed at the rail by Mind Save. It's a beautiful thing. Miss Hockaday is at the back. Midway on the turn, Lady Candidate comes under pressure. There goes Don't Tell Sophia making a bold move for the lead. And Don't Tell Sophia the one to beat at the top of the stretch. Jemima's Pearl between horses. Vuitton's on the inside. They're followed by It's a Beautiful Thing. But with a furlong left to go, it's all Don't Tell Sophia, who is putting on a show in the Pippin. She is clear by seven widening lengths. Vuitton second, a battle for third. Don't. Tell Sophia, awesome in victory. Vuitton second, mind save, closed ground late to be in a photo for third with It's a Beautiful Thing. Don't tell Sophia, though, a very, very impressive victory. Wide on the turn. Uh, the chart says four wide. Uh, okay, I'd say five or six wide. Scores by seven plus lengths, returning $5.80 for Phil Sims. Wheaton, part of the entry, first time stakes, finishes second under Terry Thompson. Mind save finishes third at 10 to 1. And on Monday afternoon, three-year-olds going the two-turn mile in the Smarty Jones stakes. Always in a tiz, 9 to 5. And they're off in the Smarty Jones. Avare breaks out very swiftly. King Henny has speed, as does Officer Alex. Texas Bling is in the group as well. Will take charge, is caught wide into this first turn, and Brown Almighty won from the outside. Always in a tiz, was not off quickly, but he's moving up now to be a joint fourth. Officer Alex is now six lengths off the lead. Best of Birdstone inside of him, and Stormy Holiday trails. Avare will set the tempo, leads by three quarters of a length, prompted by Texas Bling in second. On the inside, always in a tiz, now comes up to be a joint third. Outside of him, will take charge in the white blinkers, racing in the fourth spot, now claiming that third position. In between those two comes King Henny. Officer Alex will be caught four wide down the backstretch, but he's only three lengths off the lead. Brown Almighty behind him. Best of Birdstone is next, and Stormy Holiday at the back. Into the far turn, chasing Avare, who's been there throughout, leads by a neck. Texas Bling gets a nudge to go after him. Will take charges three wide. Always in a tiz on the inside. Officer Alex is outside of him. Officer Alex now taking third as Avari the first to give way. Just behind them comes King Henny. As the field reaches the top of the stretch, it's Texas Bling on even terms with Will take charge. Always in a tiz. Angles out after them. Third then Officer Alex. They're heading inside the final eighth of a mile. Will take charge on the outside. Texas Bling a tough customer. Always in a tiz is next. Stormy Holiday has surfaced from well behind. It is Texas Bling on the inside of Will take charge. Head and head. Always in a tiz. Chasing. Here's the line. Will take charge. Upsets him in the Smarty Jones. Photo for second between Texas Bling and always in a tiz. Stormy Holiday fourth. Will Take Charge, the offspring of the brilliant Take Charge lady, brilliant at Keeneland, scores the neck victory, returning $26.20. How's this for a trip? Will Take Charge, six wide into the first turn, four wide onto the backstretch, three wide in the second. By far the best horse in Monday, Smarty Jones. Texas Bling at 18 to 1 finishes second completing the $316 exacta, and the 9-5 to five favorite, always in a tiz, finishes third. Out Santa Anita Way, up first, the old opening day stakes race, the 61st running of the Palace Verdes, Justin Phillip, 5-2. to two. And away they go, all appear to come out well. Comma to the top, hops out the gate, and Comma to the cop going straight to the lead. Private Zone goes with him on the far side, those two flying early. Just in behind that, we have Justin Phillip in third. Drill has ridden along in the red colours to try to keep up with that first two. Then we come back to A priority. Canonizers alongside of that, and Sahara Skies at the back. Seven lengths would cover the lot. 
They've run past a half mile and Comet to the top of the rail and Private Zone absolutely flying. They've gone three clear now. Drill is next. Justin Phillip on the far side. Sahara Sky is back in fifth. A priority now giving them seven length start and Canonize is still last. They are coming to the quarter pole now. Comer to the top along the inside and Justin Phillip chasing them on the outside. Drill now having to be ridden along. Sahara Sky and A priority. They come for home. Comer to the top tries to battle on at the rail but Private Zone getting the lead. Here's Sahara Sky in the center of the track and Justin Phillip still wide open. On the outside, Sahara Sky. Sahara Sky strikes the front. He'll win it powerfully. Sahara Sky and Joe Talamo come home strongly to beat Private Zone. Third was Justin Phillip and then Comer to the top. Sahara Sky, part owner, Jerry Hollendorfer, trainer, Jerry Hollendorfer, well back early, scores the one length victory as by far the longest shot in the board returns $45.20. Private Zone finishes second and Justin Phillip, who is 0 for 10 since winning the Woody Stevens back on the undercard of the Belmont Stakes 2011, finishes third as the 5-2 to two favorite. Now, a couple years ago, they dropped the middle leg of the old La Cañada series, the old El Encino. They shortened up the La Cañada to the mile and the 16th distance. Lady of 50, 6-5. to five. And away they go. Willa B. Awesome is sent along to take the early lead. You belong to me, Missy, on the outside. Open water right there at the rail. Lady of 50 races up between horses, then comes more chocolate, and Book Review is taken to the back, but only three and a half lengths covers them all. Book Review going a little wide into the turn here was almost on horse's heels. They run towards the three-quarter pole and Willa be awesome. Just at a sensible pace, leads it by about a length. More chocolate moves up on the far side to put some pressure on her now. Back in the third spot as you belong to me, Missy, and open water tucked in fourth, three lengths off the leaders. Back second last as Lady of 50 and book review trails now six off the leader. Past the five eights they go and Willa B. Awesome. Ryder trying to take them along as slow as he can out here. Leads it by a half a length. More chocolate is in second. In behind that, open water. You belong to me, Missy, is right up alongside of them. Now there goes Lady of 50 with an early move. Lady of 50, three wide but moving in. Book review is last but no more than four and a half off the leader. Past the three eights they go and Willa be awesome taken on by more chocolate and more chocolate now goes to the front and more chocolate now brings them to the quarter pole. Willa be awesome tries to re-rally at the rail. Behind that comes open water. Up alongside of that is you belong to me, Missy. And book review now going to hook to the outside and come with her run and book review is closing in the center. More chocolate the leader. Book review now coming fast down the center. Willa be awesome tries to re-rally. More chocolate kicks away though and more chocolate a scintillating performance today more chocolate the daughter of Malibu Moon wins the La Cañada more chocolate book review was second then will it be awesome and lady of 50 more chocolate first time dirt exiting the Robert J Frankel stakes on the turf scores the one and three quarter length victory for John Sadler and Garrett Gomez they return $12.60 Defeating the second choice in the wagering at 7 to 5, the recent winner of the Grade 1 Malibu. That is book review. And Willoughby Awesome finishes third, a neck in front of the 6 to 5 favorite, Lady of 50, in the 39th running of the La Cañada. Monday afternoon, time for a three year old Phillies in the San Inez. Shortened up last year to 6.5 furloughs. The champ is in here, Beholder. One to five. Okay, he's up, guys. And away they go to a perfect start. I'm with the blonde is very fast in the center from the inside gate small moves is ridden along small moves used up but flies to the lead Dawn's charms goes with her could not be going any quicker on the inside Lady Rosamond beholder is on the far side three lengths off those leaders then there's another three and a half lengths back to switch to the lead and last of all Renee's tight and a good nine off these leaders they run past the half mile pole and Dawn's charm on the far side kicks on 
Small moves having to be sent along at the rail. Now in a tad tight. There goes Beholder. And Beholder now up to second. Beholder now putting early pressure on that leader. I'm with the Blondes taking third. Behind that, Lady Rosamond. On the far side, we have Switch to the lead. And last of all, Renee's Titan. They come to the top of the lane. Dawn's Charm at the rail. And Beholder right up alongside. Beholder, Dawn's Charm. I'm with the Blondes back in third. Heads are turned in for home now, and Beholder is now asked to go on, gets a tap on the shoulder. Dawn's Charms running a huge one along the inside, and coming with a late run now is Renee's Titan. Here comes Renee's Titan, closing steadily down at the rail. They come for home, it's Dawn's Charm hanging on. Renee's Titan, Beholder, Renee's Titan, Renee's Titan, and Tyler Bay's up to one at close for second. Dawn's Charm and Beholder switch to the lead, was fourth. But Renee's Titan, last early behind the most incredible fractions, the fastest fractions my notes say the Santa Inez has ever seen, 21.14, 43.67, Renee's Titan nowhere near that, 8 to 1 on the morning line was Renee's Titan, in the afternoon they didn't like her at all, better than 20 to 1, returns 43.80 for Doug O'Neill and Tyler Bays. Beholder, the one to five favorite, the recently named champion of her division, makes her first start at three. She finishes second, Dawn's Charm, third in Monday's Santa Inez. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, three from the Big A. No matter where in the world you are, the excitement of wagering on live horse racing is just a click away. CapitalOTB.com offers live streaming free past performances, analysis and selections from professional handicappers, and a simple, safe, and secure wagering platform. And best of all, it's surcharge free. CapitalOTB.com, the better choice. With more than 70 convenient locations, internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com, and live operators ready to take your call, CapitalOTB.com is the better choice for wagering on thoroughbred and harness racing. Stop by one of our locations to bet in person, or open a Capital Bets account and place your bets over the phone or at CapitalOTB.com. Whether you're on the road or in the comfort of your own home, Capital OTB is the better choice. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Time to turn our attention to the Big A. Up first, Saturday afternoon, the 94th running of the evening attire stakes. Last gunfighter, even money. And they're off. Burn, Bridges, and Arlo go for the early lead. Now, last gunfighter moves up. Arlo's in front. Burn, Bridges down at the rail. Last gunfighter runs a close-up third. Then it's a break of almost three lengths to Isn't He Perfect? And Scotus trails the field in fifth. They head around the clubhouse turn, and Arlo is in front by two and a half lengths. Burn Bridges in second by a neck. On the outside is the favorite last gunfighter in third. Then it's Isn't He Perfect? Three more to Scotus. They're heading up the back stretch now. The opening quarter mile went in 24 and three fifth seconds. It's Arlo by a length. Last gunfighter now moves into second. And then comes Burn Bridges in third. Isn't he perfect? Down at the rail in fourth. Isn't he perfect? Just two and a half lengths from the lead. And it's a break of four to Scotus. Half mile, 49 seconds. Arlo with the lead here. Arlo setting the pace and leading by a length over last gunfighter. Isn't he perfect? In third by a neck. On the outside is Burn Bridges, and farther back is Scotus. Now they go around the far turn. It's Arlo with the lead. Last gunfighter giving chase in second. Isn't he perfect down on the inside? Then Burn Bridges, farther back Scotus. Positions unchanged as they hit the quarter pole. It's Arlo with the lead. Last gunfighter on the outside in second. Isn't he perfect? Looking for some racing room and looking to come through down at the rail. Three quarters went in one, 12 and three. It's Arlo trying to hold off isn't he perfect at the rail and last gunfighter on the outside three of them across the track as they pass the 16th pole it's last gunfighter and isn't he perfect that was between those two last gunfighter won it by a head isn't he perfect second and arlo was third last gunfighter under irad ortiz scores the four dollar victory in the evening attire for chad brown 
Isn't He Perfect finishes second. Arlo f checks in third in the evening attire. Time for New York Reds on Sunday afternoon in the turn of the century stakes at 3 to 5, Brigand. And they're off. And they all came away to a good start. Brigand at the rail. Groom for a victory. And it's Brigand. With a narrow lead over Groom for Victory as they head for the clubhouse turn. Social Salt is down at the rail. Mine over Matter runs in fourth. And Uncle T7 is the trailer in fifth. And the favorite Brigand leads by a length. With Groom for Victory chasing in second. Mine over Matter on the outside in third. As the field straightens away and heads up the backstretch. The opening quarter mile in 24 and 3 fifth seconds. Brigand leads here by a head. Groom for victory is second by almost three now. Mine over matter is third by a neck. Social Saul is down at the rail and Uncle T7 at the back. They continue up the back stretch and the odds on favorite Brigand leads by three quarters of a length over Groom for victory. Opening half mile in 47 and four. Mine over matter, third by a head. Down on the inside is Social Saul, then Uncle T7. They go around the far turn. Brigand still in front. Groom for victory, still second. Two and a half lengths to Mine Over Matter, who's been put to a drive in third. Uncle T7 is on the move now in fourth. Social Saul is the trailer as the field comes into the stretch. Three quarters in 112. It's Brigand with a three length lead. Uncle T7 at the rail. On the outside, it's Mine Over Matter. Groom for victory in between horses and Social Saul. Brigand looking to go wire to wire with Erod Ortiz Jr. It's Brigand in front, and Erod Ortiz Jr. has won his fourth straight on the card. Looked like Mine Over Matter did get second. It's actually a three-way photo with Mine Over Matter, Groom for Victory, and Social Saul. Brigand makes every poll a winning one. Originally, Ramon Dominguez was named on this runner. Dominguez had the awful, awful injury on Friday. Irad Ortiz substitutes, makes it two victories in a row on HNC this week. Uh, on s Sunday afternoon, the Ortiz brothers had a huge, huge day. They won combined the first seven races in a row, three and then four by Irad. They returned $3.40 for Bob Baffert. Brigand was scratched from Saturday's evening attire. First time on the inner dirt track. Now three for four with New York Reds. Mine over matter finishes second. Social Sol third in the turn of the century. And on Martin Luther King holiday, they ran the Jimmy Winkfield at 2-5 to five clawback. And they're off a stumbling start for number one, a winning cause. He's at the back. Rubies and Pearls goes out for the lead, and Rubies and Pearls is in front by two. Clawback in second. In the fairways in between horses. Meeker Avenue on the far outside in a three-length gap. Back to winning cause in fifth. Rubies and Pearls with the lead over the big favorite, Clawback. It's Rubies and Pearls through an opening quarter in 22 and 3 fifth seconds. Clawback on the outside, second by four. In the fairway is third. Meeker Avenue has a drop back, and then it's winning cause. And there goes Clawback to draw right alongside of Rubies and Pearls as they come for the quarter pole. And it's Clawback in front. As they enter the stretch, the half mile in 45 and 1. Clawback with the lead over Rubies and Pearls as they come down for the eighth pole. It's Clawback clear by four lengths. Then Rubies and Pearls winning cause, putting in a late run after the stumbling beginning. But he will be no match for Clawback who takes the Jimmy Wingfield stakes by five. Winning cause second, Rubies and Pearls was third. And Irad Ortiz wins all three Aqueduct Horses and Courses races. This one by a handful returning $2.90 for Rick Violet, Claravich Stables, and local owner Bill Lawrence. Was even money on the morning line off the maiden special victory. Wins easily. Winning cause, ladies and gentlemen, who fell to his face at the break. Kissed the dirt. Finishes a Herculean second with rubies and pearls third in the Jimmy Winkfield. That wraps up this week's edition of Horses and Courses. We invite you to join us next week as we review stakes racing from around the country.